Goal is to raise 50 Cornish Cross meat chickens while only caring for them once a week. I am designing and building an automatic chicken tractor and I am so excited about it. I wanna bring you guys along on the whole process. At the end, I'll make one video that explains it all, but for now, I'm just gonna show you guys as I go how I'm developing it. Today, I'm just working on the design and I wanna show you my process and hopefully you guys will be able to give me some feedback and some ideas for the, for the tractor before I actually get to building. Before you start coming up with concepts, ideas, pictures in your mind of what it's gonna be, it's really important that you start with the what. The what is the most important thing that sets the tone for everything. So many people jump right into the how and don't start with the what. So they're already answering how to fix it, how to solve the problem before they really understand what the problem is. The first place to start is the goal. What is the goal? The goal is to raise 50 Cornish Cross meat chickens while only caring for them once a week. Well, that's the overarching premise for everything. Next, what are the requirements? Well, the requirements come from understanding Cornish Cross chickens. And why Cornish Cross chickens? First of all, Cornish Cross chickens are the most efficient bird as far as pounds of feed for pounds of meat that you get out of it. Every other bird is much less efficient, so that's why I'm going with the Cornish Cross. They're not genetically modified, they're not GMO or something like that. Uh, they're actually just a crossbreed. All right, so what are the requirements of Cornish Cross chickens? I did my research and they take about eight weeks to get to maturity and they can go out on pasture at about two to three weeks depending on the weather. For their feed, they need to be uh, 12 hours on, 12 hours off of their feed schedule. Otherwise they'll overeat and have all kinds of health problems. So whatever my feeding system is needs to be removed automatically every 12 hours and then put back down after 12 hours. That final eighth week is really gonna define the system for everything. So how much food, water, and room are they going to need in that eighth week? 50 birds are gonna require about 133 pounds of feed in that final week. They need twice as much weight of water as they do for feed. That comes out to about 32 gallons of water. And then they're gonna need one and a half square feet of living space uh, per bird in that final week. A roughly an eight by 10 foot space would give you uh, 80 square feet. That gives me a little bit of cushion. What else did I find out about Cornish cross birds? They're a little bit slow and they're a little bit dumb. So they're easily run over. A chicken tractor, for instance, could very easily run them over if the person pulling it is not careful. They're also gonna need protection from the elements. So I'll need shady spots as well as some access to the sun, probably a wind block, be able to get out of the rain. That's specific to the Cornish cross. Now, considering my environment and the things that I'm gonna require, what else do we need? First of all, I'm gonna be doing this at my friend's house. I don't have enough acreage to, to, to move them around every day. So my friend's gonna take care of them, but he lives in a place where there's significant predator pressure. Bears, mountain lions, foxes, hawks. Uh, the predator pressure out where he lives is very significant. The other thing I require is that it needs to be a very clean enclosure. What's the purpose of raising your own chickens if you're just gonna raise them like the, like the mass production people do and they're sitting in their own mess and gross and not eating organic food and not getting bugs and green grass and all of that stuff, I might as well just buy it from the store. Another requirement I'm putting on myself is to do no custom programming. It would be really easy to get an Arduino and just program everything, but I want you to be able to duplicate what I'm doing and most people don't have programming skills. And so I'm just gonna try and find something that's off the shelf if I can. I also am not gonna do any welding. Uh, I don't have the tools for that or the skills and I don't wanna have to hire somebody out to be able to build this. So just gonna be woodworking skills only. Where we're gonna be keeping the chickens, there's no power connections or water. We can probably drag a water hose out there if we needed to, but we can't have a permanent hookup and we don't have permanent power. So whatever power I need needs to come from solar and battery and whatever water needs to be stored on board the, the enclosure. Fortunately, the ground there is pretty flat. It's a little bit sloped, but it's mostly flat, but there are gopher holes and mounds of dirt that the gophers have made. So it needs to be able to traverse at least some holes and a little bit of hills. I also want to be able to access the entire inside of the enclosure in case there's a dead bird or when we go to process, I want to be able to easily get, gather up the birds. I want to have an indicator, a visual indicator I can see all the way from the house that's going to say, hey, there's the water or the food is low. You need to come out here and maintenance it. Okay, so now that I've set the parameters and the requirements and the goal for this project, the next thing I do is just kind of brainstorm ideas, throw ideas out on paper, look up products, look up materials, look up concepts that can be useful to me and I'll just write them down or take pictures of them and set them aside and as I just start to design and develop and troubleshoot this problem. 
the first thing that came to my mind was the Joel Salatin chicken tractor. It's a very efficient, well dialed in design. I think I can just modify and add to that to make it work for me. So I'm gonna have to use two by fours instead of two by twos because I'm gonna be carrying so much water and so much feed, uh, it needs to be a lot stronger than what Joel Salatin does. Another thing I'm thinking about is a solar energizer. A lot of them are 12 volt systems with a 12 volt battery. I can use the 12 volt battery on there to not only power an electric fence, but I could power all of my other systems off of that as well. Powering it like a car where there's a direct power to the wheels, I think is gonna be problematic because if they get stuck in a rut or something like that, or veer to the left or to the right, it could end up who knows where. What I'm thinking is putting a winch on the front of it and putting a, a stake or a T post out in the yard and having the winch pull it to where the stake is. That will keep it true and straight. Another product I really like to use are linear actuators. They're reliable, they're simple, they're powerful, and they're relatively cheap. So linear actuators are probably gonna be the go-to product for actuating my feeder system, whatever that looks like. I've had really good luck with PVC and water nipples for what my watering system for my, my laying hens. So I imagine I'll probably use something similar to that for this system. Two 17 gallon totes from Home Depot would, ple would be plenty of water. Plus if I split that system, then I have a little bit of a redundancy. Bike wheels are another option. Uh, if I got some used old bike wheels, they're everywhere. I'm sure I can find some for cheap. All right, finally, I wanna show you the model that I made in Autodesk Fusion. Uh, this is the chicken tractor that I designed. Right here are the water tanks, these two blue things, and they come down to the pipes down here where we'll have the water nipples. And these will each be 17 gallons for a total of 34 gallons of water. Over here, we have two sets of doors. So this set of door, this will be for the, the feeder system. So if I lift that up, or in this case, I'll take it off of the model, uh, you can see here's the, the feeder that I designed. So here is the feed, and the feed comes out into this little trough. And this, this part here goes right here. This part goes up and down, will be actuated by a linear actuator, and it will close off the feed every 12 hours and then drop down and feed will slide out. Feel free to comment in the video, ask questions, and say, hey, is that going to work, or here's how this works, and uh, I'd, I'd really like to have you guys' feedback on this, and, and hopefully I don't have any blind spots. Uh, here's an, an electric energizer that will power uh, the winch as well as the electric fence. Some PVC pipes, that's what will hold the electric fence out away from the wheels, and then around here, so we'll have two le levels of electric fence. Uh, I didn't draw in the wire, but you can see the PVC holders, and those are at each corner. On the front of this, I have a, I'll have a, a winch mounted here. I didn't, I didn't draw it, but I'll mount a winch right here, and that will pull the whole thing along, and I'll have it set on a timer, so it will run for about a minute. The winch that I found on Amazon uh, runs about 10 feet per minute, depending on the load. So if I have that turned on for one minute every day, it should pull it about 10 feet, which would move it all the chickens onto fresh green grass. I have another lid here, this middle door. Uh, that door will be hinged. They'll both be hinged at this point in the middle between them. And so I can access the entire middle of the, of the tractor or I could access just the food part. That's pretty much the design I'm going with so far. If you have any thoughts or questions on it, please uh, put those in the comments and I'll try and respond if I can. I'm hoping to start building this in the next couple of weeks. So. Uh, keep looking out for new videos. Subscribe if you want to follow along. When I'm all done, I'll put a whole compilation video together of how I built it. Um, and maybe I'll even put out plans if it turns out good enough. If you want to see my laying hen coop video, just click on this video right here.